Hey guys, and welcome back to episode number two of our beautiful racing guide act one till act 10 with Tai Tai Killy. Killy, hey, you're Killy now, okay? It's a new, new nickname, Tai Tai Killer. Oh god, right. I'm sorry. I apologize. Sorry. Uh, no, sorry uh, <laughs> uh, we're actually having a lot of fun, at least I have a lot of fun, and I do have to apologize in episode one, I'm talking a little bit too much, but I'm just so excited and happy that he's uh, here with me, and we're going over his uh, bot, basically, where he did this amazing run here. And I think, without further ado, we're just gonna jump right in the, into the action. We stopped at the Fair Graves after my veil, and now we're hitting the Southern Forest Act 2, and let's see how he is approaching that one. And I yep. want to mention here, Aitai is doing coachings, okay? So if you want to really get a, a personal uh, review of your run, basically how this works is um, you're playing, uh, like streaming it on Discord so he can watch it, and uh, you're basically getting teached by him. And after that, uh, if time is over, uh, or at least like some time left on the session, uh, he will teach you basically you're gonna uh, watch the run together in a like two times speed or something and he will tell you again what could you do better and what not and Jeez. i think this is basically the best way to improve if you have like a professional racer sitting there watching you play and give you uh tips on okay. that it's like super amazing uh yeah so i offer coaching um but uh, i think the best way to learn is probably just to watch a series like this on mbx youtube channel um go ahead and try it out yourself and Typically, people run into some issues on their own, and uh, I'm here to help address those issues if you run into them. But getting into the run, um, right off the bat, we go to the right side from uh, town over towards old fields, and we look for the den. Once you find the den, you're going to go ahead and plop down a portal scroll like I do here, and we come back to it after getting the crossroads waypoint. This is so we don't have to backtrack at all throughout uh, this part. Yeah, I see this quite often. Every time you, you see something, like in Act 1, you had the same with a dweller uh, area here. Mm -hmm. You see the entrance, you pop down uh, a portal, and then you just move towards the next waypoint, Jeez. go back to town, and then hit the waypoint so you're basically not losing any kind of time. This is actually super cool to do. Because if you like do the dweller first, then you have to walk over it. Uh, you're just gonna save an immense amount of time if you're just dropping the portal and just uh, continue your run and then go back uh, without losing any time. Yep. Uh, and the reason why we do den, by the way, is just right there. You saw that I picked up the second quicksilver the run, and uh, a lot of people struggle to, you know, get optimal uptime on both quicksilvers. Just make sure that they're always running. Um, if, you know, like your refrigerator, just. If, uh, if you're not using your Quicksilver, you're losing time. So Here I look around for a scroll of wisdom so I can ID this. Um, it's kind of risky and hardcore. I decided to do the thing where you open the box and then you just flame dash away. Um, doesn't always work. You know, you can desync backwards. Kind of scary. Or if freeze. Like a freeze explode box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you're softcore gaming, you don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, you, you just, just die and you're like, and... shit, it was freeze. <laughs> yep. Once more, once more. Uh, yeah, this uh, this passive point that I put into the crit chance, that was a mistake that I made. Um, I don't have any regrets or any respects quite yet, so it's something that I fix much later on in the run. All right, but we're going to have your entire profile of this run later on linked in the description with the path of building exactly from this run with the final tree, right? Yep. Perfect, perfect. Looking forward to that one. So, uh, I was and... just thinking about another question that I just... God, God damn it. Yeah, you just keep on going, I guess. I just relax here and, and watch you run this. All right. So um, what I was going to say is that uh, I can go ahead and leave like a, a path uh, in the path of building. So if you check it out, it'll be like uh, the early, like the first part you want to go towards. And then like, okay, where do you want to go next on tree? Obviously, you can look at the video, but uh, people... You know, if, if I'm watching a YouTube series, I don't want to go back to the YouTube series and watch it over four different times just to uh, just to find that one little part that I need. So I'd rather just uh, include it in the video or uh, the POV. Right. Here you can see that uh, I go into that pack, I throw down Orba Storms, and I start throwing Stormblast Mine. Again, going with the concept of, um, you know, the Orba Storms is going to zap all the nearby monsters. Here for the Auras, we go ahead and pick up... Uh, Lightning or um, Herald of Thunder, and we pick up Skitterbots. Um, you can buy one from the vendor and get one from uh, Groose there. 
And here I go ahead and stop for the Rogue Exiles. Rogue Exiles are very juicy. They drop uh, one item of every single slot and they have a high amount of rarity. So it's pretty likely that you can get some uh, magic or rare items there. If you sell rare or magic items unidentified, you'll get transmute shards. And if you sell them identified, you'll get alteration shards. That's something I didn't know either, that uh, Exiles do drop one of every single slot. That's actually... <laughs> I'm playing this like five and a half Jeez. thousand hours already. That's like my, my <laughs> ninth leak coming up. And these are informations that I've here for the first time. It's actually insane. Uh, but if, uh, the question that I had before, I remember it. What items do you pick up and what do you leave on the floor? And how do you manage um, the <laughs> selling, buying sure. stuff to not like mess up here? So typically I'll pick up uh, all the rare items on the floor and you want to have uh, inventory management. Inventory management is one of the biggest fundamentals of uh, speedrunning or just leveling fast in general. The inventory you can see that Tetris. I'm constantly... Yep, inventory Tetris. You can see that I'm constantly moving items around, trying to make as much, spot, uh, as much space as possible uh, and also doing it while moving. So that goes back to the, um, you know, using uh, another key for move only and then hovering uh, over items and moving them and doing other stuff. So you're killing beasts or because you're always talking to Einhar, or is it just like so he um, DPS is with you basically to have more mm -hmm. damage output? Yeah, Einhar uh, kills lots of monsters. He's really strong. Here you can actually pre-trap Weaver if you throw it a little bit north of that skull pile. You can see that I flame dash forward to proc Arcane Surge and I almost messed up. I was just about to say you're logging out and not picking that up. So what if that would happen? You're basically screwed. You have to like walk back and pick it up, right? Yeah, you gotta walk back. Oof. That, that would be some massive time here. Holy shit. Okay. Good that it didn't happen. Okay. So make sure you pick mm -hmm. the quest items up before you log out. And the reason for logging out is just like it's way faster and it saves you portal scrolls, right? Mm hmm. Even though we have nine portal scrolls, we're going to need those starting in like Act 3 a little bit. And it's very noticeable in Act 4 that the um, logging out is actually slower than using a portal because the portal puts you right next to the waypoint in Act 3 and 4. Um, but that's not really the case in X1 and 2. So that's why we log out so much in X1 and 2 uh, as compared to the later X. And on top of that, we're going to need the portals in maps, right? So it's nice to have a nice little pool of portals for that. True, yeah, true. One thing I like to note about Vol side areas is up until about the mines uh, level 2, I believe, um, they don't really matter. They're not going to drop Vol side or... Uh, fragments. Fragments. Yeah. Yeah, until they're, uh, I believe, zone level 36. I could be wrong, but it might actually be mines level 1, but... Basically, before then, you can just ignore vault side areas. Um, if you want to go into them for fragments, you can feel free to do that. Uh, starting like mid Act Four, like I said, in the mines or post mines. But it's uh, just if you're... why do we need the fragments just for the quantity boost, or do you actually plan to uh, kill a theory uh, for items and loot, and loot generally, or is it just because um, on, on the Awakener event we're gonna have like the Atiri kill as well, or? Um, so it's twofold for that. Uh, if you're playing in the uh, the Awakener event and you're trying to compete against me for the Aziri kill, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, go into those areas for the fragments. Or if you're in a trade league, uh, Aziri's worth a lot of money early on because nobody else is really, you know, not there's not too many racers. And so if you can copy what's uh, seen here and like get a, a nice time of like five hours or less for Act 10 Katava with everything done, then if you can kill Adziri by that point, uh, there's not going to really be anything on the market for Adziri's Promise or like the Scepter, for example, whereas people will still want to buy those items. Yeah, it's basically the same as in uh, Trade League. The, the faster mm -hmm. you get to the end game content, for example, uh, I remember some guy was selling Guardian maps in the early stage of day two so i was i was basically somewhere at white tier maps and somebody already had guardian maps for sale and since there are none on the market and everybody wants to like be the first guy uh like see their name and, and i don't know like like the first items of each kind if it's a star fortune and it's here is this favor you can sell those for a tremendous amount of currency early on it's like insane and if you're one of the first guys even be able to kill a Siri and you get the series promise people are going to buy way more than it's actually worth because after like two or three days uh when a lot of people are doing uh at siri the Jeez. price will just drop down insanely but this is like how you can make easy currency early on if you're willing to grind it out and really do like a 24 hours run like you know what it, what is real life just hey we have new league you know like just keep on going 
Uh, yeah, back in Legion League, I was able to get a mirror uh, by myself in about two to three days because I was selling disfavors uh, from Uber Ziri for about eight to ten exalts each. Back when mirrors were about uh, 40 to exalts each. Yeah, basically the, the price always rises after time when people get there. It's like the same... Um, I, I want to pause this here real quick for this explanation. Sure. Uh, the thing is, when people ask me, hey, I just found an exalt. Should I just keep it? Because at the moment, Exalt is 35 Chaos. And like this is trade league price now early on, right? Uh, I get like mm -hmm. 35 Chaos for an Exalt. Or should I just keep it? Because in the next week, they're going to be 100 Chaos. And in two weeks, they're going to be 150 Chaos. And I personally, I always invest it. Because I, I get this one. I sell it for 35 Chaos. It doesn't matter. Because I get all the other items that I need that are core items for my build. I get them really cheap as well. So I can buy... Uh, I don't know, like any item for like 20 chaos, although I know next week it's going to be an exalt. So it doesn't really matter. It's just like how the, the, the market works. In the early on, nothing is really super expensive. And with the 35 chaos, you can already build a character to take on Shaper. Uh, and then you can still grind it out. And with investing into your gear, you're going to speed up your farming uh, by quite a ton. And, th and this is the way how you gain more experience and even more items. And you will come out on top... Um, with the, the currency gain in general, basically, if you're invest early on, because if you're finding like, let's say five exalts until yellow maps, which is kind of unlikely, but let's say it happens and you hmm. never invest, you, you throw them on your stash, your character is as garbage as before. If you would invest that, you can make a top tier uh, character with this early on currency. And then later on, you can still buy, uh, sell the items again that you bought for cheap, right? So you're still gaining hmm. currency while investing into your character. Uh, I agree with you on the point that you should invest into your character, um, but the very first items on the market, so like the very first at Zeri's Promise or the very first Disfavors, those start off very expensive because there are lots of people who want to buy them, but if you're the only person who can sell them, you can set them at whatever price you want. So if I'm to at Uber at Ziri in, you know, 14 hours or 10 hours or something like that, I'm able to sell those for, you know, as much as I want. Yeah. Yeah, but I personally, I would never consider on day two buying a serious disfavor because I wouldn't even have the currency to link it. So what is the reason <laughs> for basically, right? I'm really talking Tabula about... Tabula and a disfavor? <laughs> exactly, yeah. All right, about the race here, Act 2. What bandits sure. are you going for here? Um, so currently in the game, the only two options we really have are help Alira or kill all the bandits. And it basically comes down to... Are you ever going to use critical damage in your build? If yes, then help Alira. If not, then it's okay to kill all of them. Um, even if I'm like a dot build, for example, I'll still help Alira because the uh, the fifteen percent all res is super nice. It makes uh, it makes speed leveling so much more convenient because you don't have to have quite as much resistances. Yeah, it's just hardcore things, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, but even if you're on softcore, it's you know if you die to a, a boss, it's not only does it take a little bit extra time, but it's a little frustrating. Of course, yeah. Yeah, the all resistance like early on. It's, it's the same thing if you get like a gold rim early on or not. These the 30 or 40 all resistance is so nice because every time like before you kill Kitaver, uh, like every time you kill it, uh, you're going to get this 30% less resistance for the next upcoming acts. And yep. with a gold rim and, and like helping Alira and you're almost rest capped in, in the normal five acts. So you have like a ring or something or a belt with life resistance and you're good to go nice something important to note about that is um typically in a speed run we'll try to see how we can get 105 percent all res before we even kill gatava this way um when we get the 30 percent penalty we'll still be at capped res so um when we do eventually get to act five you'll see me type out like okay left boots or you know left ring and the right wand and the boots and the helm this is so i know which ones have an open suffix and i can uh, go ahead and craft resistance, craft resistance on them. Top of the yep so here you're going back. It's it's basically the same principle as you always say, like, okay, uh, not wasting any time. So you just keep on going. You you went through the Vile Ruins and now going back, uh, helping Alira in this case, because both uh, in one hand, like, mm -hmm. did your game uh, crash? <laughs> uh, yeah, the game Oof. crashed. I thought you were pausing. It's just, uh, just a leak card simulation, dude. All right, could happen to anybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically, this is a perfect example. This can happen to the best of the best as well. <laughs> and we uh, saw something... I, I saw Waggle on, on the race dying to Kitabra. I think like when I saw this, this this oh, was, was like that was me. 
It was you? <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, Waggle died to Hillock, and I died on Kitava. Uh, I also died sorry, on I, I meant Hillock, sorry. That was my, my bad. Oh, okay. I, I meant Hillock, yeah. Like, like in, in a thousand runs, this happens once, and then it happens on the stage, and you're like, holy shit. But it happens. It happens to the best of the best, same as Disconnect, or even when the leak starts, you have a massive queue, like 30,000, and people then accidentally exit the game instead of go back to log in, and they're having this massive queue again, and... Yep. Uh, something I'd like to note about Western Forest is that on the opposite side of the road is going to be Weber, and on the same side of the road is going to be Alira. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So, it can Varai, right? It can what? Yeah, it, it can be that Alira is on the top side as well, right? Uh, you look at the road and the waypoint. Um, so, like, one side of the road will have a waypoint. Let's say that there's the waypoint on the left, the road. That means that Weber is going to be on the right. So, you can see here in this layout... Um, if you go back a tiny bit, oh, here we are. Um, you can see the waypoint, yeah. and you can see that Weber is on the same side of the road, so the left-hand side, and that Alira's, or uh, the, the, sorry, the waypoint's on the right-hand side of the road. But you can see that uh, Weber's going to be the, on the opposite side of the road. So the waypoint's on the right, then there, to the left of that is the road, and then to the left of that is going to be Weber. Ah, okay. Like, I personally always see, like, once I see those trees with some wet, uh, some nets on it, I know, okay, on this side is Weaver. But I never paid attention to the road with the waypoint, actually. That's actually really cool. Yeah. So, again, you can you can kind of sort of see the, the road and the, the waypoint layout, but uh, opposite side of the road from the waypoint is going to be Weaver. Same side of the road is going to be Alira. Something I'd like to note about my vendoring here is that if you sell uh, an armor scrap, you'll get two scrolls of wisdoms for each one. And if you sell a transmute or a blacksmith's whetstone, you'll get four scrolls of wisdoms for each one. So you can see here that I vendor those two, uh, well, those four essentially, and that's how I'm able to get more scrolls. Scrolls of wisdoms are like your chaos orbs of early game because it means that you can identify items. And again, going back to the principle that unidentified items sell for transmutes and identified items sell for alterations. Um, we need a lot of alterations, especially since we want to do another wand craft and we want to buy gems from Yina and Act 2. And potentially uh, get uh, adrenaline on your Quicksilver flask, for example. Like, yep. when do you actually start crafting? Um, I start looking for uh, adrenaline after I have both of my wand crafts at level 20 and after I have all my gems from Act 2. That way, um, I don't like need a gem from Act 2 and go, oh no, I don't, I don't have it because I was... Rolling for adrenaline, never let yeah. dude. You it can is. imagine it like um, if you needed money to survive, you wouldn't spend it on lottery tickets. So, no point in looking basically, yeah. <laughs> or you get lucky. Hopefully not. But yeah, in my case, I I I, I have to stop gambling. Never lucky, it's, dude. Uh, never lucky, dude. I I can tell you stories. I uh, here a... for XP. Sorry, go ahead. Keep on. I was just going to say for XP, you ideally want to be level 20 or above on uh, Vol Oversoul. Uh, especially if you're doing like all your passives and all your skill points. Uh, well, the descending, but all your trials, um, you should be pretty lined up. Um, here, uh, we grab the crafting recipe for spell damage. I go ahead and transmute that wand because I'm going to do the craft in a bit. And I'm just fixing around inventory. Um, here, I'm grabbing a rare wand that I want to use. So I'm going to use an essence on it. Basically trying out your luck and hope for some nice stats, because you're, at the moment at least, or just use your DPS on the boss, I guess. Because you're going to use those uh, right for the here. vendor recipe. Yep, and here, not a lot of people know this, but if you kill all the adds, you're able to actually stop them from phasing out. But I missed one over there, so I said oops. That again. They basically are uh, pre-stacking everything again. Orb yep. of Storms. Same concept as Brewvale. Uh the Orb of Storms will proc and hit all the monsters, so you want to use it a little bit further out from you. But yeah, I didn't I didn't position the Orb of Storms quite correctly, so you can see that I didn't do quite as much as I wanted to. And I also didn't proc um, Arcane Surge from Flame Dash, so if I did that, he would have died instantly. You can basically kill off the Val Oversoul with one go. But yep. because you said your Orb of Storms will take care of the adds, aren't they like too widespread for that? Because if I see um, here, nope. you have like this adds here, this adds here. If you place your Orb of Storms here, uh, it's kind of never have the circle of it. Or um, Sometimes you have to place it a little bit uh, off to the side. But uh, in this case, I just kind of messed up. It's perfectly fine, though. I imagine next patch of all over Souls is going to get changed. So, you know, might not be able to one-shot all the bosses like what I'm doing in this run. But it'll still be really high DPS. And this is why the level 8 one craft that we did earlier is going to be useful. 
Uh, and then I'm already prepared and ready to go for a level 20 craft on the other one. Can you just log out and you have access to Act 3 now? Yep. Because I'm always you waiting, you know? Out. It's like, yeah, find the exit to Act 3 and you're like waiting there like, holy shit, take... Can you, can you, can you open that door? I know it's here, you know? But yeah, yeah. that, that logout saves actually hilarious amounts of time. Mm -hmm. And you can see that my damage goes up by about 50% once again. So damage is 162 and now it's 262. All right. So we are currently on 32 minutes for both Act 1 and Act 2 clear with all the skill points uh, as well as um, the trials. The trials. Uh, so we are good to go. One is actually would be the perfect timing for you to hit lap. I mean, it's probably something we're gonna discuss in the next episode, anyways. Yep. <laughs> so we're gonna um, we're gonna keep it here, okay? We're gonna put Act Three stuff in Act right. Three and keep Act Two spoilers. in Act Two. Sorry, sorry. Just spoilers. <laughs> Just spoilers. So yeah, guys, thanks uh, for tuning in uh, on this episode, and yeah, see ya on the next video.